Shalom. Brothers and sisters, Christ back at you with this word, the Bible. We're going to do a, a lesson today on uh, multiple wives. According to the Bible, it's in the Bible. We want to bring that out for a lot of different platforms. We realize that uh, this is prevalent in the earth, one way or the other. And a lot of brothers and sisters uh, um, have different takes on it. And uh, uh, we're going to bring it out according to the Bible. And, and uh, hammer it out and see uh, uh, how it goes. This is the way we understand it. This is the way we understand the Bible. This is the way we know it. So we want to let, let it be known. We want to start here with Genesis 2, 22. In the beginning, of course, start with man and woman. And uh, we want to establish that. Read on that. Genesis 2. Verse 22. We got a lot, a lot of perspectives here on this, on this lesson because um, comments have been made one way or the other on, 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 from a bunch of different angles. From people that believe and people that don't believe. While yet everybody is carrying on uh, in their lives, you know, one way or the other. People that believe and don't believe. Some people that believe, uh, they, they, they take part in it. Some of them don't. And some people that don't believe take part in it, and they don't. So, meaning that uh, um, people are, uh, they intermix, they marry and don't marry, and, and, and refrain from marrying continually. Why yet, it's in the Bible according to understanding. So we want to make sure it's understood how we believe, and put this out for the masses so, so some brothers and sisters can get some understanding on, on, on how it goes according to the Bible. 2.22 here. Genesis 2.22. Right. And the rib which the Lord power had taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. Okay. And the rib, and Adam said, this is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. Praise the Lord. She shall be called woman. She should be called woman. Read on. Because she was taken out of man. Right. Therefore, shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they shall be one flesh. Let me, let me, let me we're going we're gonna to bring out plenty of scriptures. We're going to bring out plenty of scriptures on, on the marriage, how these things go. So, uh, don't mind me. We're going to bounce back and forth, here and there, and try to uh, get some understanding out of this. But it's all going to be biblical. It's all going to be biblical. See, here, give me this in 1 Corinthians 11. I want to spin off that. Because we want to need to understand this first and foremost. The hierarchy. The hierarchy between man and woman. Also give me, uh, uh, because in the beginning we started out with Adam and Eve. And obviously it's Adam and Eve. And read the last verse again, 24. Genesis 2, 24. Right. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife. They're going to cleave unto his wife. And they shall be one flesh. And they shall be one flesh. Right? Praise the Lord. And this is, I know it's an emphasis for a lot of people that says that, uh... In the beginning, there wasn't no uh, um, uh, uh, no man with two women or man with three women or nothing like that. So how could a brother have uh, multiple wives since Adam didn't do it? Adam was a patriarch. Adam was the beginning of all. You understand? And so everything is not going to be fashioned after Adam. Everything is not going to be fashioned after this brother here, Jacob, our father. Pull it out. Uh, Gen uh, Genesis 35, 35, 20, 21, right? Show them what you got. Read the first verse here. First Corinthians 11 and 1. Right. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Right. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. That's what Paul said. Like, I follow Christ, follow me. Because I follow Christ. Right. Read on. Now, I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things. Right. And keep the ordinances as I deliver them to you. So that's what he's talking about. Remember me in all things. Keep all the ordinances like I deliver them to you. Keep the ordinances like I deliver them to you. You understand? All the ordinances. Don't leave something out. Don't be partial. Don't leave something out and act like you, you, you don't have to deal with that part. Or you can avoid that part. Or you can ignore that part. There's nothing to be ignored. So we, that's why I said there's going to be a lot of scriptures that's going to come out. Because we're going to put, you know, we're going to try to identify all the parts. Right? We know that. 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. Okay. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of every man is Christ. Christ is over every man. The woman is not over the man. Christ is over every man. Read on. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of the woman is the man. Read it. 
And the head of Christ is the Most High. And the head of Christ is the Most High. That's spiritual hierarchy, from top to bottom. The head of the Most High, the head of Christ is the Most High. The Most High has no head. He's the head of all heads, right? But the head of Christ is the Most High. The head of man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, straight up and down, right? Hold that. Give me the seventh verse. First Corinthians eleven and seven. Right. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head. For as much as he is the image and glory of the Most High. So a man indeed ought not to cover his head for as much as he is the image and the glory of the Heavenly Father. You need not cover your head, leave your head open. We got turbans according to the scriptures, according to the Bible. We wear these garments because it's biblical. The Lord tells us we should wear linen material. These are linen garments, priest garments, right? All these are linen, right? Linen head wraps, girdles, everything when they boil at work. And our heads are open. A man indeed ought not to cover his head for as much as he is the image and the glory of the Heavenly Father. Read on. But the woman is the glory of the man. But the woman is the glory of the man. We just read it here. Hold it. Bring that back one more time. 2.24 uh, in Gen Genesis 2. Genesis 2.24. Right. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. They're going to be one flesh, but the woman is his glory. Right. Bring it back. Read it. Read on. 1 Corinthians 11 and 8. Yes. For the man is not of the woman. The man is not of the woman. We know that because we just read that in Adam. I mean, Genesis. About Adam and Eve. The man is not of the woman. Read it. But the woman for the man. But the Read it again. Huh? Excuse me. Uh, 1 Corinthians 11 and 8. Come on. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. But the woman of the man. The man is not of the woman, but the woman is of the man. Read on. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. Neither was the man created for the woman. But the woman was created for the man. Is that applicable? These things still apply. This is Paul, New Testament. These things still apply. But the woman was created for the man. Read on. First Corinthians eleven and ten. For this cause ought the woman to have power on the, on on her head. So she should have her head covered. She needs to have the power on her head, meaning she should have her head covered. Read on. Because of the angels. Because of the angels. So it's spirituality so she can get that protection. So she can humble up under the vibration of being the man is the head. The head of the woman is the man. The head of Christ is the head of the man is the Christ. The head of the most high is and the head of Christ is the most high. The woman needs to cover her head. A humbling process to her man. As it says in another part of the Bible. Read on that. First Corinthians eleven and eleven. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman. Neither the woman without the man in the Lord. Neither is the man without the woman. He's going to have a woman or the or, or woman without the man in the Lord. It's spiritual, man. It's all spiritual. It's done with the spirit. It's done with the most high. Adam with the most high and gave him a woman. It always, who gave Adam the woman? The most high. The most high gave him the woman. Read all that. For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman. The, woman, the man is by his woman. He's not of the woman. They can't be of each other. As the woman is of the man, the man is by his woman. Praise the Lord for it, right? Give me this, come back to the beginning. We're going back to the start. How these things start out, how we became a peoples, right? How we became a peoples. Again, everybody can't fashion themselves like Adam, because there's only one Adam and Eve. And everybody cannot be Jacob. But we're still going to read how we started out. Read on. Genesis 35 21. Right? And Israel journeyed. And spread his tent beyond the tower of Hedar. Right. And it came to pass, when Israel dwelt in that land, that Reuben went and lay with Bilhah, his father's concubine. Right. Israel is the name given to Jacob. Israel is the name given to Jacob. Right. His name was changed from Jacob to Israel. Read on. And Israel heard it. Now the sons of Jacob were twelve. The sons of Leah, Reuben's Jake, Reuben. Jacob's firstborn. Right, so the sons of Jacob were twelve. The sons of Leah. Leah was his first wife, right? Read on. Reuben was the first son. Sim and Simeon and Levi and Judah and Issachar and Zebulon. Six sons she had. Six sons Leah had. Read on that. The sons of Rachel, Joseph and Benjamin. She had two sons. Rachel, his second wife. She had two sons, right? Read on. And the sons of Bilhah, Rachel's handmaid, Dan and Nephtali. And she had two sons and another woman, a handmaid or a concubine. Read on. 
and the sons of Zilpah, Leah's handmaid, Gad, and Asher. Another woman. So this, this brother of Israel, or Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, had 12 sons for four different women. This is how we became a nation. This is how we became, they all were the same seed, all from this one man. This is how we became a people. This is how we became who we are today. This is how we became the so-called Negroes, West Indians, and Puerto Ricans. The marriage started out with Adam and Eve for the whole world. And now here, with Jacob, Leah, Rachel, Bilhah, and Zilpah. Right? The four women that he had six, twelve sons by. Right? First look, that's how the thing started out. But now, I want you to give me Ephesians, the fourth chapter, right? And we're going to read that chapter through, from top to bottom, the fourth chapter. Because all this stuff is spiritual. You need to, need to understand that. All this stuff is spiritual, right? Everything is, is, is spiritual, and that's how we're going to play it out. Bring me Ephesians 4 and 1, read that. Ephesians 4 and 1, Therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you, that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. Right. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Forbearing one another in love. Forbearing one another in love. This is how we go. Therefore, therefore, beseech you. Therefore, therefore, the prisoner, the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that we walk with the vocation wherewith we were called. How it goes. How do we get to this point? How we evolve and how we progress, how we get to this point, in whatever way the Lord calls us, we are walk with that vocation, meaning accept it, deal with it for the reality that it is. Right? We don't not. Ephesians four, four and two. Right. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Forbearing one another in love. Right? We don't. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. And the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. That's what this is all about, man. That's what it's all about. We're endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. Want this thing to be understood spiritually. Or how we deal with this thing spiritually. You understand? Multiple wives in this thing. Some people feel like it's not righteous. A lot of people feel that way. A lot of people feel like it's not righteous. Besides what the scripture says, besides what the Bible says, you understand? Everybody's familiar with David. Everybody's familiar with David, a man after the Most High's heart, a man that the Lord made covenant with, right? Give me a few scriptures here now. Give me a, a, a Second Samuel three and one, Second Samuel five and eleven, and for the record, give me Psalm one thirty two. Give me a couple verses from the top, right? Now, give me a give me a couple of verses from the top of that Psalm 132. Cause we want to hear a little something about David here, right? 132, come on, Psalm. That's 34. Psalms 132 and 1. Lord, remember David and all his afflictions. How he swear unto the Lord and vowed unto the mighty power of Jacob. Right. Surely I will not come into the tabernacle of my house, nor go up into my bed. I will not give sleep to mine eyes. Or slumber to mine eyelids. Right. Until I find out a place for the Lord. And habitation for the mighty power of Jacob. This is David. Who the Lord, who the Lord blessed him. And loved him and made a covenant with his brother man. And made a covenant with his brother. And endeavored an everlasting covenant. Matter of fact. David inherited the covenant that Abraham had. Right. He inherited the covenant that Abraham had. Mm. And it came down from Abraham and moved on to David. Because the Lord loved this brother here man. And made. And, and passed that covenant. This big time covenant from Abraham on to David. And blessed his seed. He told Abraham, in thy seed, the whole, all the world is going to be blessed in thy seed. That will pass from Abraham to David. Right, read on. Praise the Lord. Uh, Psalms 132, verse 6. Lo, we heard of it at Ephratah. Right. We found it in the fields of the wood. Okay. We will go into his tabernacles. We will worship at his footstool. Praise the Lord. Arise, O Lord, into thy, into thy rest, thou in the ark of thy strength. Let the priests be clothed with righteousness, and let thy saints shout for joy. Praise the Lord. Hold that. Give me, come back. Give me uh, 2 Samuel 7. Stay in 2 Samuel 7. 1 Samuel 7. 1 Samuel 7. I want to give, uh, read a little bit of that covenant that the Lord made with David. 
Oh, he's ten, uh, seven. Bring it up from uh, uh, second Samuel. I'm sorry, second Samuel seven. Second Samuel seven. Right. Give it to me from uh, twelve. Second Samuel seven verse twelve. Right. And when thy days be fulfilled. And thou shalt sleep with thy fathers. Talking about David. This is Nathan, the prophet, talking to David. When thy days should be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and when you die and be buried in the city, of, you know, in the holy city, in the sepulchres of the prophets or the kings. Right? Read on. This is Second Samuel seven and twelve. And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels. Thy seed after thee. Meaning his children, his sons, after him, is going to proceed out of his bowels. Meaning from his woman, right? Meaning uh, through intercourse and, and birth of babies. Read on. And I will establish his kingdom. Right. He shall build a house for my name. And I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Right. He's going to establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Sounds like he's talking about Solomon. But he's not talking about Solomon. Give me Romans 1 and 1. Read on. And I will be his father. And he shall be my son. Right. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. The Lord said if he, if he, if he committed wickedness, then he's going to chasten him with the rod of men and the stripes of the children of men. This thing never happened to Solomon. Nobody touched Solomon. Nobody uh, 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 beat Solomon down, spit on him, smacked him, or hit him with rods or whatever. None of these things they did to Solomon. You understand? Read on that. This is verse 14. I will be his father, and he shall be my son, and he shall commit it. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him. Right. I took it from Saul. Praise the Lord. Read on. Whom I put away before thee. Right. Read it. In thine house, in thy kingdom, shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. Right. Read on. This is 2 Samuel 7, verse 17. Right. According to all these words, and according to all this vision, did Nathan speak unto David. Right. Praise the Lord. Did Nathan speak unto David? Hold that. Give me Romans 1 and 1. Romans 1 and 1. Paul, a servant of Yahweh Shai, Christ, called to be an apostle. Right. Separated unto the gospel of the Most High, which he had promised before by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Right. Read on. Concerning his son, Yahweh Shai, Christ, our Lord. Concerning Christ our Lord, concerning His Son, Christ our Lord, read on. Concerning whose Son? The Most High's Son, right? Read on. Which was made of the seed of David. Which was made of the seed of David. Just like it was promised over here, through, through Nathan the prophet, read on. Which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. Right? According to the flesh. Of thy seed. He said, of thy seed. Of thy seed. Read that part, of thy seed. This is uh, verse 12. And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, 2 Samuel 7 and, 12, 7 and 12, and when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. Right, and I will establish his kingdom forever. That's what Paul is prophesying about. That's what Paul is talking about. Right, read on. This is uh, Romans 1 and 4. Hold on. Give me back. Come back to Acts. Give me Acts 5. 5, uh, 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 28. Right? Leave this out. We are, I want to establish David. You know what the Lord is doing with David, right? Come back to this uh, um, 3 and 1. Hold that. Give me this. Uh, 5 and 28. No, hold on. Give me this other one here. Look at 3 and 10. Acts 4 and 10. 4 and 10. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel right. that by the name of Yahweh Shai Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom the Most High raised from the dead, whom the Most High raised from the dead, even by him doeth this man stand here before you hold. Go ahead. This is the stone which was set at naught of you buildings, right. which has become the head of the corner. Praise the Lord, which has become the head of the corner. Hold that. Come back to 528. This is Acts 528. Uh, Acts 528 saying, did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And right. behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. That's, that's the Pharisees talking to Peter, right? Read on. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, 
We ought to obey the Most High rather than men. We ought to obey the Most High rather than men. We ought to obey the Heavenly Father rather than men. Read on. The power of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai, whom you slew and hanged on a tree. Right. Him hath the Most High exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Him has the Most High raised up to be a prince and a savior and to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. This is the seed that come out of David. Leave that out. Come back to uh, 132. Psalm 132. And uh, 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 leave that. Come back to Ephesians 4. Right? And um, just give me, read right 11. Psalms 132 verse 11. And the Lord hath sworn truth unto David. He would not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I set upon thy throne. Of the fruit of thy body am I going to set upon thy throne. Right? Read on. If thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony that I shall teach them, their children also shall sit upon the throne forevermore. For the Lord hath chosen Zion. He hath desired it for his habitation. Praise the Lord. That's straight up and down. So as David and the Lord established his way. Right? And we want to we we do that for a reason. Right? Give me one more. Give me Isaiah 55. One through five. I want to do this one more time. Because I'm going to come back to this Isaiah 55. Because the Lord established this. He established this with David. Right? Read on that. Isaiah 55 verse 1. Right? Ho! Everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. Right. And he that hath no money. Come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money. Without money. Amen. Come, all you that have no money, come and buy wine and eat without money. Get this juice without money. Get the understanding that I read on. And without price. Without price, read it. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread? Right. And your labor for that which satisfieth not. Right, that's where you have the churches and the religions and all these, all these lying uh, tabernacles that tell lies. That don't feed into the scriptures. Everything we got to say, we're going to bring it out of this Bible. That's right. Everything we got to talk about or expound upon, we're going to read it out of the Bible. We're going to read it through the scriptures and prove that it's good. Right? Read on that. Hearken diligently unto me and eat ye that which is good. Read on. And let your soul delight itself in fatness. And let your soul delight itself in fatness. Read it. Incline your ear and come unto me. Here in your soul shall live. Right here in your soul shall live. Incline your ear. Bow thine ear. Hear the words of the Most High Power. Read on that. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. And I'm going to make an everlasting covenant with you. Check this out. Even the sure mercies of David. Even just like David, the sure mercies of David. So the Lord offers us the covenant of David. He offers us the covenant of David. Read on that. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people. And a, a leader and commander to the people. That, the Lord says he's giving David for a witness to the people. And a leader and a commander to the people. So David's life and whatever we got here about David testifies to us. Not that we all can beat David. Not that we all going to be like David. Because that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying. But what the Lord is saying is he's giving for a witness to the people. That this was a righteous brother. And nobody can make him wicked. And nobody can make him wicked. Uh, and that's what, that, that's what I, want, I, want, I want to establish that. They're not going to make him wicked. Read what you got here. Come back to 2 Samuel Street. Ephesians 4 and 3. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. That's where we're at, man. That's what this is all about. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. That's what this is all about. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Right? Read or not. There's one body and one spirit. One body. One spirit, man. We know. Even as ye are called in one hope of right. the calling. And one hope of the calling. Read it. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Right. One power and one Father of all. That's all it is. It's all one. You understand? It's all in one. It's one power, one faith, one Lord, one calling. You understand? And how do we get together? How do we get married? How do we set up in these situations? The Lord does it all. He's the one and only. He does it all. How we get joy to the Lord? He's the one and only, right? We know that. Ephesians 4 and 6, one power and one father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. And in you all. And in you all. Read it. But unto every one of us is given grace. Right. According to the measure of the gift of Christ. According, but unto every one of us is given grace. According to the measure of the gift of Christ. What's that saying? Everybody will get the same, the same gifts. For the same measure of it. 
According to him, because everybody's not David. Everybody can't be David. Everybody won't be David. But let's examine David a little taste, right? And how he got the deal. Three and one out. Second Samuel 3 verse 1. Right. Now there was long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. But David waxed stronger and stronger and the house of Saul waxed weaker and weaker. But David got stronger and stronger. And the house of Saul got weaker and weaker. Read on. And unto David were sons born in Hebron. His firstborn was Amnon of Ahinoam. Ahinoam. His first son was Hi uh, Amnon of Ahinoam, right? David. Under, under, under David, sons were born unto him in Hebron. His first one was by Ahinoam, right? Read on. Of Ahinoam of the Jezreelites. The Jezreelites, right? Read on. That's his, that's his wife. That was one wife. Read on. And his second was Chiliab. Of Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. Right, of the Carmelite. So Abigail had his second son. Read on. In the third, Absalom, the son of Meaka, the daughter of Talmai, king of Gershur. So that's the three sons by three different sisters this brother had right now. David, read on. Right? In the fourth, Adonijah, the son of Hegith. In the fifth, uh, Shaphatiah, the son of Abito. That's five sons. By five different sisters. And listen here, we're not bringing this out to, 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 to put out this vibration that everybody should try to be like David. Or everybody should fashion his lives like David. We just want to establish who David was and how he dealt and how the Lord felt about him. And why? what, what, he, what was he talking about in Isaiah 55? Bring that back. One more. Go ahead. In the sixth, Ithraim by Igla, David's wife. Right. These were born to David in Hebron. That's six sons. By six different sisters. Six sons by six different sisters the brother had. Right? Born to them in Hebron. Right? Call this and give me back uh, Isaiah 1, 5th chapter. But give me back Isaiah 55 and 4. Read that again. Isaiah 53 and 4. Verse 3. Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear and your soul shall live. Because that's what David did. David inclined to the most high power. You understand? And his soul is living. Read on that. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. Even the sure mercies of David. Right. Behold, I have given him for a witness a to witness, the people. Right. A leader and commander to the people. Come on. That's the most I say he did with David. He made an everlasting covenant with his brother and raised his seat up on high. Raised his seat up on high. And he didn't break that covenant. He didn't break that covenant. Right. Come back to Psalm 132. Leave that. Read on some more. Ephesians 4 and 7. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he said, when he is ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Right, he divided. Read that again. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Read on. Now he that ascended, was it... What is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? Right. He that ascended, that he also descended into the lower parts of the earth. We know not. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens. Praise the Lord. That he might fill all things. That he might fill all things. Talk about Christ. Read on. And he gave some apostles and some prophets, some evangelists. Right. And some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. That's what Christ did. So he gave each other brothers in different, different steads, in different levels, in different vibrations, for the, for the perfection of the body, for the edifying of Christ, for the perfection of the body, for the edifying of Christ, right? Uh, yes, hold on. Read on. Ephesians 4.13, Till we all come into the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of the Most High, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Until we all come into the unity of the faith. Until we all come into the unity of the faith. So we all need to understand and lock into this story like it really is. And to understand, you know, everybody's not the same. Everybody's not going to be the same. We're not trying to put this thing out. That everybody should be the same. That everybody should have uh, be like David and have uh, six different sons for six different women. And have multiple wives and all these things. That's not what we're saying. We're not saying that at all. We just want to understand this whole vibration. The Lord made an uh, everlasting covenant with David. Read that part. You want me to spin off that then? Go ahead. This is Psalms 132, verse 11. The Lord hath sworn it in truth unto David. Yes. He will not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I set upon thy throne. 
If thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony that I shall teach them, their children also shall sit upon thy throne forevermore. The Lord have, have, have made a, a covenant with David. He's not going to turn from it. And he didn't. We read that earlier in Romans. When the Moses has taken uh, of thy seed, of, the, of his flesh, Christ came. We don't know. The other one. This is Psalms 89, verse 30. Right. If his children forsake my law and walk not in my judgments, if they break my statutes and keep my commandments, then will I visit their transgression with the rod and their iniquity with stripes. Right. Nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not utterly take from him, Praise the Lord. nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. Right. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. That's the Lord not going to break it. He's not going to be a hypocrite. He's not going to renege. Of the covenant and the promise he made with David. His man that renege. His man that, that, that break his promises. Right? Go ahead. Once have I sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. Praise the Lord. His seed shall endure forever in his throne as the sun before me. Praise the Lord. That's what the most I said to David. That's how he's going to break that. That's how, he, that's how he made a covenant with his brother. To continue his brother's name. Right? Come back to 2 Samuel 5. What verse you in? Ephesians 4 and 13. Read it. So we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of the Most High unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And to we all come into the unity of the faith, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the unity of Christ. We all need to lock into the understanding thereof how these things really go. Everybody's not the same. Come back up and say uh, right here which says uh, 8 verse. Ephesians 4 and 8. Right. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. And he gave gifts unto men. So check this out. He gave gifts unto men. But they differ. Everybody don't have the same gifts. So they differ according to the proportion of faith. And this now I want to bring out a few scriptures to edify that point, right? Give me uh, uh give me Mark 10, 1 through 12, and give me uh, uh Matthew 19, 1 through 12. Give me 1 Corinthians 7, 1 through 17. And uh, go with that now, right now, right? So what you got? Ten one through twelve, please. Mark, please. Mark ten one, and he arose from thence and cometh into the coast of Judea by the farther side of Jordan. Right. And the people resort unto him again, and as he was wont, he taught them again. He taught them again. And the Pharisees came to him and asked him. Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife? Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife? How does this thing really go? Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife? Read on out. Tempting him. And he answered and said unto them, What did Moses command you? Yeah, what did Moses command you? Right, read on. And they said, Mo Moses suffered to write a bill of divorcement and to put her away. Right, Moses, Moses suffered to write a bill of divorcement and to put her away. That's what Moses said. Right, read on. And Christ answered and said unto them, For the hardness of your heart he wrote you this precept. Because you have hard heads. Because he know you're wicked. Because he know you was evil. Because he know what you did with some sisters. You understand? You were sincere. You only got them for superficial reasons. For the hardness of your heart, he wrote you this precept. Check it out. But from the beginning of the creation, the Most High made the male and female. And for this cause, Shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife? Right. And they twain shall be one flesh. Go ahead. So then, they are no more twain, but one flesh. But one flesh, they join together. This is what we got here. This is what we read here in Ephesians 4 also. No more twain, but one flesh. What verse is that? That's verse 8. That's verse 8. No more twain, but one flesh. You understand? For this precept, people. One flesh. The same thing has been into one Lord. Come back to Ephesians 4. You got that? Mm hmm Ephesians 4, mm -hmm. and read that uh, 6 verse. Ephesians 4 and 6. 4 and 5. Ephesians 4 and 5. Right. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one power, and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Right. Praise the Lord. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one Father of all, or one flesh. They're all in one flesh. Right. Read on that. Mark 10. Verse 9. Come on. What therefore the Most High have joined together, let not man put asunder. Don't let man put it asunder. Don't let man break it up. So what does this mean? Check it out. Let's read on. Finish this one. 
And in the house of his disciples asked him again of the same matter. And he saith unto them, Whosoever shall put away his wife and marry for another committeth adultery against her. You can't put your woman away and marry another woman. You can't, just because you got one wife, you're not supposed to put her away and marry another woman. Then you commit adultery against the woman that you have first. So this is part of the explanation why David has six sons by six different women. He wasn't going to put the first one away or the second or the third. He wasn't going to put them away and marry another woman. Read on. And they brought young children to him. Stop. That's 12 verse? That's the, we did the 12. Good. Praise the Lord. Give me Matthew uh, 19, 1 through 12. Read on what you got. 1 Corinthians 7 and 17. 7 and 1. 7 and 1. 1 Corinthians 7 and 1. Down through. Right? Read on. Now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. It's good for a man not to touch a woman. Don't even touch a woman. This is what Paul said. Check this out. Read on out. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. Right? Let every man have his own wife. To avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. Right? Read on. And let every woman have her own husband. And let every woman be married also. Right? Read on. Let the husband... Render. What does that mean? Let every man have his own wife. Let every woman have her own husband. Is only her own husband? Or, or is only him? Or she owns him? Some women, they got this... You know, they say, This is my man. They say, It's my man. That's what some say. Is it true? Right. Some of them say, It's my man. You can't do this or that, that, or this, this, and that. But we read earlier, the head of man is Christ. Man belongs to the Lord. Head of the woman is a man. Hold what you got. Hold what you got. Give me a, a, a Ecclesiastes 36 uh, and 24 for the record. You still reading? Mm -hmm. Read on. First Corinthians 7 and 3. Read the verse again. 7 and 2. But to avoid fornication, Come nevertheless, on. to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. Right. And let every woman have her own husband. Right. right? Let the husband run unto the wife, do benevolence. And likewise also the wife unto the husband. Let the husband run unto the wife, do benevolence, do kindness, do justice. Right. It's talking about how they, how they, how they cohabitate, how they get together, and how, how they deal with each other. Let them run and do benevolence. How they cohabitate, how they get together, and one should. Uh, um, have a problem with the other and, and, and talk about uh, you can't touch me tonight or you know uh, we're not sleeping together tonight or ain't nothing gonna happen or you know act like they you know like they you know like they're gonna deny each other one or the other because of some 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 other problem or some some disagreement you had throughout the day or because you you, you know some jealousy thing or whatever have you do benevolence do kindness it's going into how they cohabitate straight up and down Raj read this this is uh, 1 Corinthians 7 and 4. Right. The wife hath not power over her own body, but the husband. Praise the Lord. And likewise. Also, the husband hath not power over his own body, but the wife. Read it. Defraud, defraud you not one, one the other. Defraud you not one the other. Except it be with consent for a time. Except it be with consent for a time. Unless you agree. For what? Read on. That. You may give yourselves to fasting and prayer. That you may give yourselves to fasting or prayer, read it. And come together again. That Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. Incontinency, right? For your, for, for your not being together, for not laying together, for not cohabitating together. That's what it's talking about. So let the, render, let the husband render do benevolence unto the wife and vice versa. The wife to the husband. So you don't uh, come up with some petty issues and say, no, 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 no. You sleep on the couch or some simplicity. They watch these TV shows and follow so-called white men in his way. Keep peace in your house. Keep peace when you're married. Men and women, do benevolence. Do kindness. Just with each other. Right? Except you agree for a time. And you say, listen here, man. I'm, you know, we're going to be praying and, you know, or whatever. Or we're going to be fasting. And the Sabbath is coming up. Or the high holy days are coming up. Or you know, I'm resting. Or we're resting. Or we need to rest for a while. You agree. Otherwise, you're good to each other. You, 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 you endeavor or you indulge each other, right? Show them what you got out. Ecclesiastes 36, 24. Right. He that giveth a wife beginneth a possession. Not she that gives the husband beginneth a possession, but he that gives the wife 
begins the possession. He that gives the wife begins begin the possession. A help like unto himself in a pillar of rest. That's where Adam got in the first place. A help me. A help like unto himself in a pillar of rest. A help like unto himself in a pillar of rest. Meaning, it's not about fights and static and trouble. A help like unto himself in a pillar of rest. Come back to South, I mean Matthew 19. We might come back to this one here. But come back to now Matthew 19, right? What else you got? Second five. Right. Hold that. What else you got? You in First Corinthians seven. Read on. First Corinthians seven. Excuse me. First Corinthians seven and five. Come on, understand that everybody men get different gifts. Men got different gifts and, 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 and different blessings from on high. You understand? So the most I show you that we just read in Mark that the, the brother said that Moses wrote this commandment. He, he should give a bill of divorcement and put it away. But Christ said from the beginning it's not so. You know, when you come together, you become one flesh. Not twain, but one flesh. One, one zone. So what? If you put your woman away and marry another, then you commit adultery. But if you put your wife or her husband away and marry, she commit adultery. It's not about putting away. Far from it. Read on out. First Corinthians 7 and 5. Defraud you, not one the other, except to be with consent for a time. Come on. That you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. Right? Incontinency. Incontinency. Come on. But I speak this by permission and not of commandment. Check this out. For I would that all men were even as I myself. Yeah, he speak this by permission. Paul said, I would that everybody were like me. Because Paul, he didn't have a woman at the time. We don't not. But every man has his proper gift of the most high. Right, but every man has his proper gift of the most high. I would that all men were like me. But everybody's not like Paul. Everybody have his proper gift for the most high. They come different ways. Everybody get different vibrations, different gifts. Check it out. One after this manner and another after that. There's a difference. Read that again, that verse. First Corinthians 7, 7. For I would that all men were even as myself. Right. But every man hath his proper gift of the most high. Right. One after this manner and another after that. So one man can't say to the other man, why are you doing that? You should be like me. Or Paul didn't even say that. Paul said, I would that everybody was like me, but I understand that everybody got his own gift. Everybody got his own gift. What after this man and what after that? Everybody's not the same. Brothers want different things. Brothers want in different ways. Check it out. Read what you got. Matthew 19 and 1. Right. And it came to pass when Christ had finished these sayings, he departed from Galilee. And came into the coast of Judea by beyond Jordan. Right. And great multitudes followed him. And he healed them there. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? Right. And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. And they twain will be one flesh. So for this cause, a man shall uh, leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife. And they twain shall be one flesh. For this cause, they're going to be one flesh, one faith, one Lord. And they'll be joined unto the Lord. We're going to get into that a little bit. But I want to keep mentioning that. One flesh meaning one faith, one Lord, one baptism. Read on that. Matthew 19, verse 6. Yes. Wherefore, they are no more twain, but one flesh. They're no more twain, but they're one flesh, right? We know that. What therefore the Most High have joined together, let not man put asunder. So it's not, it's not about having a wife and putting her away and getting another wife. Again, this is how David accumulated wives, right? We know. They say unto him, Why? Did Moses then write to give command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? Check it out. He saith unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. Right. But from the beginning it was not so. That's not the zone. That's not what it's about. Christ said you don't put your woman away. You don't fire your woman and make her separate from you. You don't tell your woman, I'm leaving you. I'm done with you. 
I'm tired of you, or whatever the case. You don't put your woman away. But you might have an a inclination or attraction to another woman. So this is how you end up with more than one wife. Check it out, read on. And I say unto you, whosoever put away shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication. If she fornicates against you, if she go off on you, and go with some other man and do something other than that, she just caused to put her away. You don't act like Esau, the so-called white man, and tell about you're going to keep her, or you forgive her, or she's going to change. It's not that way. For when a man gives the wife, he begins the possession. And help not go to himself in a pillar of rest. Man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. All these scriptures come into play. That's why we read them. They all come into play, and they're all effectual. That's why we read them. Right? Read on that. This verse 9 again. And I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committed for adultery. Right. And whoso marrieth her, which is put away, doth commit adultery. It doth commit adultery. That's how this thing goes. It's not about putting your woman away. It's not about leaving her and putting her away, and I'm going to get another woman. That's not how this thing goes. So it's in sincerity and in righteousness that you keep your woman. If you should get another. Right? It's a man. But like I said, we won't bring out this choice here. Because everybody don't want that. And we're not professing that everybody does that. And everybody goes do that. That's for, for everybody. We don't know. His disciples say unto him, If the case of the man be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. It's not good to marry. He said. That was the disciples say like they can't understand. But man, it's not good. What's, what's up with that? We don't know. But he said unto them, All men cannot receive this same. Everybody can't receive this same. All men. All men. They're not going to really get down with this. They're not going to understand this. All men. They got, they might have, they, some of them are going to have a problem with this thing here, man. They're going to have a problem with this saying. That's why he said earlier, For the hardest of your heart, more than stuff you to put away your women. You understand? Because you know what type of guy you are already. Read on that. Say they, this is verse 11 again, uh, Matthew 19, 11. But well, he said unto them, all men cannot receive this saying, right. save they to whom it is given. Save they to whom it is given. It's not given to everybody. Remember we just read here in Ephesians, come back, you want this, read that, leave that. Give me the Ephesians again, and hold, read that verse again. Uh, 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 no, not the ones, uh, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 7. Yeah, read the gifts. 1 Corinthians, I mean, excuse me, Ephesians 4 and 8. Right. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. And gave gifts unto men. Read that. Come back. First Corinthians seven and seven. First Corinthians seven and seven. Right. For I would that all men were even as I myself. Right. For every man hath his proper gift of the Most High. But everybody's not like me. Paul said, I would that all men were like myself. But everybody's not like me. Everybody's not like me. All men are not the same. That has to be understood. All men are not the same. Read on. But every man hath his proper gift of the Most High, one after this manner and another after that. Everybody got his proper gift of the Most High. One after this manner and one after that. Right? Hold that. Read on. Matthew 19 and 12. Uh, verse 12. Verse 11 again. Right? But he said unto them, All men cannot receive this saying. Praise the Lord. Save they to whom it is given. For there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's womb. And there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. Right. And there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. Right. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. Let him receive it. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. Right. Let him understand. You understand? All men cannot receive this same. All men cannot receive this same. They can't receive it, man. Everybody couldn't understand it. So he said there were some eunuchs that were made eunuchs of men. I'm sorry. There were some eunuchs that were born eunuchs. Just what that man got. There were some eunuchs that were made eunuchs of men. There were some eunuchs that made themselves eunuchs for the most high in the kingdom of heaven's sake. Everybody got different blessings. Everybody got different juice on them. So what happened is now, some brothers, they don't even want a woman. They tell their own woman, they want to be like Paul. They said, you know, they, they want to be like Paul and say, I, I'm not even going to vote for a woman. Why well, another man say, I want more than one woman. Why well, another man say, all I want is one woman. 
It's a choice. There's choices here that brothers say. And we're going to respond upon that, right? You finish that 12 verse? Yes. Praise the Lord. Read it one more time. This 11 and 12. This is Matthew 19, 11. Right. But he said unto them, All men cannot receive this saying. Right. Save they to whom it is given. Praise the Lord. For there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's womb. Right. And there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. And there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. Right. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. That's how this thing go. So some eunuchs, they, 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 they chose to be that way. For the kingdom of heaven's sake. They chose, they wanted that way. Everybody don't want it that way. All men don't want it that way. Well, some men say they want more than one woman. And some men say all they want is one woman. He gave gifts on the men. Oh, bless us. Give me that 7-7 seven, seven again. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 7 and, 7 and 8. 7 and 7. Excuse me, 7 and 7. For I would that all men were even as I myself. Right. But every man hath his proper gift of the Most High. Right. One after this manner and another after that. That's what the emphasis is here. We need the emphasis that everybody got different gifts here. One after this manner and another after that. Right? Praise the Lord. Let's, let's understand it. Let's go back. Let's go back. Give me a, uh, what you got? You got, you got, you leave those two uh, uh, Gospels and give me a, uh, um, First Samuel 5, 11. I mean, Second Samuel 5, 11. Second Samuel 5, 11. And uh, give me First Samuel 1 and 1. And run that down. Right? And, and show them what you got here, right? Exodus 21 and 10. Yes. If he take him another wife. 7. Exodus 21 and 7. Yes. And if a man sell his daughter to be a maidservant, she shall not go out as the men servants do. Right? If she please not her master, who hath betrothed her to himself, then shall he let her be redeemed. Right, so a man that, that, that uh, sell his servant, you understand? Mm -hmm. If a man sell his daughter to be a servant, then he'll betroth her to himself, he he don't redeem her. He's not going to sell her like, uh, like, 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 like to another nation. He can't do that. I'll read that part again, I'm sorry. Uh, Exodus 21 and 7, and if a man sell his daughter to be a maidservant, she shall not go out as the men servants do. So she should not, should not go out as the men servants do. He told her to be a, a, a maid servant. Check it out. Read on. If she please not her master, who hath betrothed her to himself, then he shall then he let her be. Then he shall let. Excuse me. Then shall he let her be redeemed. Right. To sell her unto a strange nation, he shall have no power. He have no power to sell it to another nation. If he don't betroth her unto himself, because he some, some some reason he displeased with her, whatever the case may be, he's not selling unto another nation, right? Read on. Seeing he have dealt deceitfully with her, right? And if he have betrothed her unto his son, he shall deal with her after the men of daughters. And if he have betrothed her unto his son, he shall deal with her after the men of daughters. Check this out. So if the brother brought a woman to be a maid servant. But he wasn't a priest, but if he brought her for his son, to marry her to his son, you understand? Then he should deal with her in a particular way. Read on, check it out. This is Exodus 21 and 10. If he take him another wife, her food, her raiment, and her duty of marriage, shall he not diminish? If, there's the operative word here. If, there's the operative word. If he take him another wife, her food, her raiment, shall she, shall she not diminish, right? Her food and her raiment. Read that part again. Exodus 21 and 10. If he take him another wife, her food, her raiment, and her duty of marriage, shall he not diminish? Shall he not diminish? So if he take another wife, if he take another wife, his food and her raiment, shall she not diminish? Not going to diminish what you're giving her, the first wife there. You understand? If he take, what's that mean? If he take another wife, if he chooses to, because some men choose to do that, and some men don't. If he take another wife, give me Deuteronomy 21 and uh, 10. Show him what you got. 1 Samuel 1 and 1. This is a brother here that, that did another way, right? Read it. Now there was cert a certain man of Ramathium, Zophram, Zophram, of Mount Ephraim. Right. And his name was Elkanah. Elkanah, right. Read on. The son of Jer uh, Jerome. Elkanah, the son of Jerome. The son of Elihu. And the son of Tu uh, Taho. The son of Zuf and Ephrathite. And he had two wives. And he had two wives. This brother had two wives. Right? And he said, we're going to bring out some examples of brothers that have more than one wife. They're not all righteous. But we're going to make this point how they how, you know, how they in the position they're at. Right? But they're not all righteous. This brother here was righteous. 
Read on. And he had, this is 1 Samuel 1 verse 2. A righteous brother with more than one wife. Two wives. Read it. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Penina. And Penina had children, but Hannah had none. Go to the third verse. Read on. And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. Right. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord were there. Praise the Lord. So this brother had two wives, Hannah and Penina. Right? You understand? And one had children and one did not. But this brother was a righteous brother. Wasn't an evil brother at all. Right? Come back. Just give me the uh, 2 Samuel uh, 5. 5 and 11. 2 right? Samuel 5 verse 11. Hold that. Read on. Deuteronomy 21 and 10. Come on. When thou goest forth to war against thy enemies, and the Lord thy power hath delivered them into thy hands, right. and thou hast taken them captive, and seest among them, among the captives a beautiful woman, and have a desire unto her. And have a desire unto her. If you see us among the captives, a beautiful woman, and have a desire unto her, right? Read. This is in the law. This don't mean everybody's supposed to do this. It's if you had that desire unto her. Everybody don't have the desire. Just like we just read in Matthew and Mark. All men can receive this saying. All men can receive this saying. We know not. And see us among the captives, a beautiful woman, and have a desire unto her. Right. That thou wouldest have her to thy wife. Come on. Then thou shalt bring her home to thy house, and she shall shave her head and par and par her nails. And par her nails. And she shall put the raiment of her captivity from off her, and shall remain in thine house. Praise the Lord. And be well her father and her mother a full month. A full month. Read on. And after that, thou shalt go in unto her, and be her husband. And she shall be thy wife. Meaning you cohabitate. You can have come keep company with her, and she should be you should be her husband, she should be thy wife. As if you had a desire if thou had the operative word again is if. If thou has a desire unto her amongst the captives, and you want to take her to be your wife. That's a man's choice, it says here. You understand? All men don't want this. All men not gonna get it. All men can't have it. You get get a gift of the men. One according to this man and one according to that. Every man has his proper gift of the most high. Like Paul said. You understand? Read on out. Deuteronomy 21 and 14. Check this out. And it shall be if thou have no delight in her. Then thou shalt let her go whither she will. But thou shalt not sell her at all for money. Right. Thou shalt not make merchandise of her because thou hast humbled her. Because you humbled her. Because you went in unto her. You made her your wife. Even though she's of another nation. You made her your woman. You humbled her. So you can't sell it to another nation. Now, you humble her. Check this out. Read on that. Deuteronomy 21 and 15. Right. If a man have two wives. If a man have two wives. Hear now. If a man have two wives. What's the opposite word again? If. If a man have two wives. Everybody don't have two wives. But if a man has two wives. Read on. One beloved and another hated. One beloved and another hated. Read on. Go to the 17th verse. Read on. And they have born of children, both the beloved and the hated. Both of the beloved and the hated, read it. And if the firstborn son be, be hers that was hated, then it shall be when he maketh his sons to inherit that which he hath, that he may not make the son of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated. Right, you don't raise up the, the one because you love her more than you love the other one. or you, you know, It's not, not that you really hate the other woman, but it's like you love one more than you love the other. Then you don't raise your son up because you love her more. And she, he's not the firstborn. When the firstborn becomes the one that you didn't love that much, you give him what he's supposed to get. Check it out. Read on. Deuteronomy 21 16. Right. And it shall be when he make his sons to inherit <coughs> that which he hath, that he may not make the son of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn. Right. But he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn. Right. By giving him a double portion of all that he hath. Praise the Lord. For he is the beginning of his strength, the right of the firstborn is his. The right of the firstborn is his. But the, the operative verse, the operative point is the scripture that we brought out is for what? 15. Deuteronomy 21 and 15. Right. If a man have two wives. If a man have two wives. If. If a man have two wives. We brought out Exodus 21 10. <coughs> if a man should take unto him another wife. If we brought 20, Deuteronomy 21 10, if the brothers should have a desire unto one of the captives, we brought over here now this brother Elkanah who had two wives. And come back to David, 2 Samuel 5 11. 2 Samuel 5 11. 
And Hiram, king of Tyre, sent messengers to David and cedar trees and carpenters and masons. And they built a house for David. And David perceived that the Lord had established him king over Israel. Right. And that he had exalted his kingdom for his people Israel's sake. Praise the Lord. So he established that. Listen there. We're about at that time. We're going to shut this down, close the program.